And the last one is The Last Wish by Andre Kuzikowski. Ah. Hey guys, it's Kassara, and today I'm gonna to be doing the intimidating TBR tag. So I decided to do this tag because I was recently in a reading slump and my TBR has gotten very intimidating to me. So I thought I would do this tag because it just sounded like fun and hopefully it'll make the TBR seem a little less intimidating to me. So the first question is a book you haven't finished yet. And I have so many, but I'm gonna start with three. The first one is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. I have been reading this book since like June of last year. I am like almost done with it. I am so close to being done with it, but I just, never feel like picking it up. I have to force myself to read it every time and I enjoy myself while I'm reading it. I just never feel like picking it up. And I think the reason for that is I've already seen the movie. I know how it ends. Like I know what goes on in this book and the writing doesn't lend to me wanting to read it, but I still really enjoy it. And I want to finish the series at least to say that I've read the series at least once. So I haven't finished this one yet. And the next one is Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. I'm still like pretty close to the beginning of this one. I think the reason why I haven't been picking this one up as much, because even though I'm very interested in it and I enjoy reading it every time I pick it up, it's written like a history book. So it doesn't compel you to read the next chapter because each chapter kind of reads like a short story. So like each chapter is complete. So every time I finish a chapter, I'm not compelled to pick up the next chapter. I'm actually interested in reading the next chapter right now because it's like a continuation of the last chapter that I read. But I've been reading this since I got it and I'm still pretty close to the beginning because I pick it up like for one chapter like every week or so. So yeah, haven't finished it yet. And the last one is one that I was listening to on audiobook and that is War and Peace by Leah Tolstoy. I started the audiobook for this one last year and I got 48% of the way done with the audiobook and just stopped. And I haven't gone back to it ever since. So I really want to get to that one. I definitely want to finish that one this year, but it's one of those that I just don't have desire to pick it up most of the time. Like I said, I enjoy reading it while I'm reading it. I enjoy listening to the audiobook while I'm listening to it. Leo Tolstoy is one of my favorite literary fiction and Russian authors, but it's not a book that I like reach for all the time. So that's why I just haven't finished it yet. The next question is a book that you haven't read just because you don't have the time to, which is basically every book on my TBR. But we're gonna narrow this down just a little bit. The first one I wanna talk about is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I've been wanting to start this book for so long, but it's so big. And while I know that if I read it, I will finish it, like I'll go all the way through it, I just feel like I don't have the time to because there's so many other things that I wanna read that I know I'll finish faster. So I just never pick this one up. Also, The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is another one that I just feel like I have so many other books that I wanna get to first that I just never find the time to read this one. But this is a book that has been on my shelf for about a year now and I really wanna get to it, but I just don't have the time with all the other books that I'm reading. And then we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is another one that I really, really wanna get to. So I started this one last year and I put it down because I was in a reading slump at a time and I wanted something that was a little bit faster paced and I just haven't picked it up ever since just cause I don't have the time. Like I know it's one that I will like. It's a five star prediction for me, but I just, I don't have the time to get to it because I'm reading so many other five star predictions. I would be remiss if I didn't include this book and that is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson. I have been wanting to read this book for years, like literally years. I bought this book in college. Every time I go to pick it up, I just don't have the time for it and I end up putting it down but it's another one that I really, really want to get to. And last but not least is Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Adeyemi. I have been meaning to get to this one ever since I bought it. I bought it right when it came out because I mean, I bought the hardcover. I never buy the hardcover unless like I mean to read it right away. And I just ran out of time and didn't get to it and then read out of the stuff and I still don't have time for it. So that's why I haven't read it. But I really wanna get to this one as well. The next one is a book you haven't gotten to yet because it's a sequel and I have a lot for this one as well. The first one is The Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. This is the sequel to Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which I read earlier this month and I've been meaning to get to this one, but I just haven't gotten to it because it's like the next book in the series. So I was compelled to read Daughter of Smoke and Bone just to get into the series 
and I'm not compelled to get into this one just because I feel like I've already accomplished reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone and that I can go on to other books but I still want to really get to this one so like I feel like I'm waiting for next month so I can like say I can read it next month as well and I'll feel more productive that way but I really need to get to this one. Kind of along the same lines we also have The Blinding Knife by Brent Weeks. Last year at the end of the year I read The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. This is the second book in that series and I just haven't gotten to it because like I read the first one I'm like I finally got to this series and then I didn't get to the second one. I really liked the first one. I wanted to get to the second one. I started reading the second one like for a few seconds and then I just stopped and read other stuff because I was like, I did the series. And I didn't because there's like four other novels in the series. So of course I didn't read the series, but I need to get to this one. I definitely, definitely need to get to this one. Another sequel that I really need to get to is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. I read the first book in the series, The Blade Itself, years ago, like in college. I don't remember very much about it, so I really want to get to this one, but I think before I read this one, I need to reread that one. I need to reread that one first before I can move on to this one, but I still really want to read this series because I've heard so many good things about it, and I don't remember anything about the first book, even though I've already read it. Along the same lines as that one is The Queen of Anatolia by Megan Wallen Turner. When I was a child, like, years and years ago I read The Thief which is the first novel in the Queen's Thief series. This is the second novel in the series and I remember loving that book. Like I loved it so much as a child but I don't remember anything about it and I want to continue on with the series but I need to reread The Thief before I can continue on because I'll be completely lost if I don't read that one first. So the next question is a book you haven't read because it's brand new. The first one I want to talk about is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This book just came out and I got it right when it came out, but I just haven't gotten to it because I put it on my TBR right when it came out. But I had so many other books just ahead of it on my TBR, so I just haven't gotten to this one yet and I really want to get to it. I've already decided that I'm going to read this this coming week, so I'm definitely excited for it, but I have not read it yet. Another one is The Queens of Innislear by Tessa Groton. This was on my recent book haul and it's a new release and I'm so excited for this one, but I literally just got it, so I haven't gotten a chance to even put it on a TBR yet, much less do anything else, but I'm so excited for this one. And the next book I want to talk about is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This is also from my recent book haul, so it's brand new. I just got it yesterday, and I'm so excited for it, but I haven't gotten to pick it up yet because I literally just got it. And the last one is The Last Wish by Andre Subkowski. I just got this one in my most recent book haul, and again, I just got it yesterday, and I'm so excited for it, but I haven't gotten a chance to even open it yet, so... I will be getting to this soon, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. The next question is a book that you haven't read because you've read other books by this author and didn't like them. So when I was going through these books, I just realized that all of them I picked are actually sequels, but it's mostly because I didn't like the first book in the series or the first books in the series, and that's why I'm a little iffy on this one. So the first one is The Drawing of Three by Stephen King. This is the second novel in the Dark Tower series. The first novel is The Gunslinger, which I DNF'd like six times because it was just so boring. It was so, so boring. And I really, really want to get into this series because I've heard so many good things about it, but I'm really hesitant because I really, really didn't like The Gunslinger. The next one is The City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. I read the first three novels in the Mortal Instrument series, like when they first came out, like when I was in high school or middle school, one of them. And I remember being very disappointed by them. I got the next three later on, I think, when these first came out and I just never wanted to pick them up just because I was disappointed by the first three and I honestly don't remember too much what happened in those three but I have a feeling that I wouldn't end up liking this one because I'm older and my tastes have changed a lot and I didn't even like it back then so I haven't gotten to this one. The next one is King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. I read Red Queen and Glass Sword last year. I really liked Red Queens, which is why I got the whole series. And then I read Glass Sword and I really did not like Glass Sword. So I don't know if I want to move on with the third book in the series, King's Cage, 
which is why I haven't gotten it to you yet because I'm just not excited for the series the way I was when I first got it. And lastly, we have The Rose and the Dagger by Brene Adier. Last year, I read The Wrath of the Dawn and I just never picked up The Rose and the Dagger because I was pretty disappointed by The Wrath of the Dawn and I wasn't really compelled to move on to the next book in the series. I'm actually really interested. If you guys have read any of those books, please comment down below if you like them so maybe I will actually be motivated to pick those up. The next one is a book you haven't read because you're just not in the mood for it. Can I say all of my classics? I'm just not in the mood for classics. I will not do that. I will actually pick other books. So the first one I have for this is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. I'm not really sure what this is about, but it's kind of like one of those books that I haven't heard all of the best things about it, but I got this book because I wanted to read more books by Patrick Ness. So I really want to read it, but I'm just really not in the mood for it. The next one is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is a book that I'm very excited for because it's such a popular book and John Green is an author that I really like, but I'm just, it's YA contemporary and I just haven't been in a very YA mood. Or if I have been in a YA mood, it's more for like YA fantasy or something like that. And this is just so high school. Like I know it's so high school because I've read other John Green books and they're all so high school and I'm just not in the mood for it. The next one is Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King. Again, this is such a YA book and I'm just not in a YA mood right now. So I've heard so many good things about this book. I've heard that it's very deep and has some difficult moments in it that I think are gonna be amazing when I finally pick it up, but I'm just not in the mood for it right now. And along slightly different lines, we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I really like the idea of reading this book because it's a post-apocalyptic book, so it's sci-fi but I just haven't been in the mood to pick up this type of sci-fi. I've really wanted to do like space opera type sci-fis and this one is a little bit more grounded and I'm just not in the mood for it. The next question is a book you haven't read because it's enormous. And for this one I will talk about classics because when it comes to enormous like sci-fi and fantasy books I think I'm okay. Like I can read those so I'm not intimidated by them but when it comes to really big classics I'm really intimidated by them. So the first one is, of course, War and Peace. Like I have the audiobook for it. I got it from Audible and I, it's just so long. It's like 60 hours or more maybe. And I'm just really intimidated to start it back up. So yeah, haven't done that one yet. The next one is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. This book sounds like so much fun. It's like the ultimate revenge sort of story. So I feel like it would be really good but it's huge. It is so big and it's a classic. It's not even that big. Oh my gosh, only 600 pages. I just noticed that. It just looks ginormous, which makes me so intimidated by it that I just never pick it up. But I just realized it's only 600 pages, so maybe I will? I don't know. It's still big. It's still really big. The next one is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. This one is actually huge. It's almost 1,200 pages. It's ginormous. Like, oh, I, like, I feel like it would be good. This cover makes me want to pick it up. It's a classic, so of course it's really good because people love it. I want to see the movie, so I want to pick it up because I want to read the book before I see the movie. But that, that right there always intimidates me into not picking it up, but I really, really want to get to this one. And then we also have Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. This is another one. Again, it's a classic. So many people love this book. It's a movie and I really want to see the movie, but I want to read the book first, but it's ginormous. It's almost a thousand pages. Not quite. It's huge. It's really big. I've heard the main character is unlikable, so I feel like I'll like it, but but it's so big. It's so like, I can barely hold this book, how heavy it is. So yeah, I'm, I'm intimidated by these. The next one is a book that is a cover buy. So for the first one, I have Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I just really love this edition of it. I don't plan on reading this anytime soon because Charles Dickens is, he writes interesting. Let's just put it that way. And I will plan on reading this eventually. It's a classic, so of course, I plan on reading it eventually, but I just love this edition. I like the gold and the blue and, and it has a little bookmark. So I really like this edition, but I'm probably not going to get to this one anytime soon. The next one is Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. I've never read anything by Tahara Mafi before, and this is a middle grade, which I haven't heard a whole lot about. And generally I only pick up middle grades that are really popular. 
but it was so pretty on Book Outlet that I really wanted to get it. This is the only one that's like a true cover buy that I really had no plans on reading at all, but bought it just because of the cover. I just really like it. So yeah, definitely a cover buy. The next one is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. I do plan on reading this one eventually, but I had planned to read it from the library. I plan to just borrow it from the library and read it on either my Kindle or just listen to the audiobook. But when I saw the cover that someone else had on booktube, and I was just like, it's so pretty and it's so shiny, I want the book. The hardcover was on sale for Book Outlet. So I was just like, ah, oh, it's such a pretty cover. I'm gonna get it even though like, I don't want it that bad, but it was just so pretty and I, I wanted it. And the last one is a recent buy and definitely the one that I'll be reading first and that is The Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi. I haven't heard a whole lot about this book and I don't know if it'll even be any good but the cover is so pretty. I love space covers. I love covers with spaceships on it. So I really liked the cover and I feel like this is the type of book that I wanted to read soon. I hadn't planned on buying this book without like at least trying this author before or something like that or even at least hearing about this author before but it was pretty. It was on Book Outlet and it's the type of book that I've been reading recently and I've heard about this book since I ordered it. Like I kind of looked it up and other people seem to really like it so I'm excited for it but yeah this was definitely a cover buy because I ordered it first and then found out about it. The last question is the most intimidating book on your TBR. I chose three books for this mostly because two of them I have already mentioned. So the first one is definitely War and Peace. I don't know who would not include this as the most anticipating book on their TBR because it is definitely super intimidating. It's Russian literature, it's literary fiction, it's ginormous, so of course it's intimidating, but I'm excited for it. So yeah, intimidated but excited. The next one is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. This, this edition of The Lord of the Rings was my original edition. It's actually my brother's, but I stole it from him, so this is my original edition for Lord of the Rings and it was so intimidating to pick up that I had to buy the mass market paperbacks, the mass market paperbacks of them separately in order to actually start reading it. Like I would not read it in this ginormous edition because I was just so intimidated by it and I'm still intimidated by it because I still haven't finished it. So yeah. Even though I bought the other version that are less intimidating, this one still intimidates the crap out of me. And last but not least, we have Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Dickens is an author that intimidates me so much just because of how he writes and how old his books are. And he just has a lot of words in his books. And this one is huge. It is ginormous. It's one of his biggest ones yet. And it's called the Bleak House, which doesn't pull me towards it. Like, it makes me think that it's well bleak so yeah it's kind of intimidating but i have it on my shelf so now i have to read it so that's all the books that i picked for this tag there are so many of them i'm still kind of really intimidated by my tbr but i'm a little bit more excited about it now i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i post videos every monday tuesday friday and saturday so consider subscribing if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel all social media links are in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time Bye. Okay, this one is actually huge. This one is almost 1200 pages because it is definitely super into uh, super intimate. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. Also, she, mm, also, surely, mm, nah, let me start completely over.